Hello, hello, wonderful people. I'm Cindy James. I'm Helen Bradley. And this is In This Very Moment. In this very moment, what we were doing just before this, <laughs> I was singing a sacred chant to prepare us, and Helen was singing this sacred chant. Shut up and dance with me. <laughs> yes, just that's like really, that. Just like that. <laughs> <clears throat> that's what it is. We're dancing with our souls and fusing our personalities. And in this very moment, Helen is with me, obviously, in where I live temporarily now, and she is helping me dismantle this, this home because I'm going to be moving in a couple months and beginning that process of, of releasing and letting go. And it is so good to have friends along the journey in the letting go process, because as I was saying to Helen earlier, and I said this at my brother Stephen's eulogy too, which was almost four years ago, that missing is just intricate, you know, inextricably related to loving. And when we love fully, we are going to miss and we can choose to numb or avoid so we don't love fully. And then that missing, that pain of missing can turn into appreciating. And so almost four years post Stephen skedaddle, I appreciate more and I appreciate the experience of it, even mm. though there's still some missing. It's beautiful. <clears throat> so that's what's today. Helen, tell me how you are today. I am nervous but so gracious, grateful. See, I am perfectly like all those things. This is what I was doing right before the, we went on live stream. Like, let me fix your hair there. Now, you're not, unless you want cleavage, you're not going to want that. You're like preening each other. I am actually wonderful. I am so wonderfully in my body at this moment, which is not typical for me as I stare at an image of myself and imagine all of the beautiful people who are listening to it. But... <laughs> Who better to do it with than you? So Helen was here as I was preparing for this and she was appreciating how many bazillions of times I've been doing this by myself. Yes. And I want to tell you yes. the technology part, I can transmit Ooh. the oneness and the healing energy of the universe and drop into the eternal now and time and space and speak from that level. But the whole lighting thing and the reverse imaging that happens on these things and to figure it out. And um, that's been kind of my kryptonite, but I am, I am now super woman and that, I still would like the quality to be a little better. And this is how I figure out where I need lighting on because the image is reversed. I have to punch my face and say, okay, this side is darker. Now <laughs> fix that side. Yeah. And, I mean, that's what it is. It was such a beautiful process to observe though. It was this like, oh, I see you. And then you walking over to the window and then coming back and then, oh, I see you a little differently. Like what a gift that is. That process, if every time we looked at ourselves, we could say, you're okay, let's brighten you up. Then just come back. It's quite you up. And then just accept whatever you can do in five minutes. Yes. yes. <laughs> so dear, wonderful people and person in the energy in this very moment that I'm experiencing is so much feeling, sensation, thoughts, energy. I have not slept, uh, <laughs> you know, morning to night. I mean, I normally don't sleep that all through the night in any event, but my sleep is usually not hindered by going to the bathroom or rolling over. I have had maybe three hours night sleep for the past few days, not because there's anything especially wrong that I'm dwelling on, but there is so much shifting. There's so much letting go of what was as spectacular as I thought it was, as many hopes I had for it, whatever it might be. And then jumping into the faith that I will be able to, and you will, and we will be able to create lives that are are just better. I mean, I like to do this is I do a litany when I talk about the greater, but I also do a litany with what we long for as humans. And I say this vibrant health so that we can have vibrant health individually as groups and the planet and the creatures and the resources themselves. And then what it is to have real happiness, which is not that it's Shangri-La all the time. Real happiness is being able to why why the waves, why the raves <laughs> of energy <laughs> to be able to ride that. Um, and so I'm just normally when I'm doing this, Helen is chatting and now Jen is chatting. So you can read if that's relative because I can't do both. Well, I will read this. It says, OMG, I am streaming in gobs and oodles. You can let them know about the event tonight, which that's we're wonderful. so excited about. That's wonderful. And I think we were going to stream in my private Facebook page and Gobs and Noodles as well as YouTube and Perfect. all of that. So that's wonderful. So I tell you about that. Um, 
Which I think is why I'm wonderful, actually, because tonight is really exciting. You know, this whole business. So I was just about vibrant health, real happiness, lasting pros a, a harmony, which has to do with all relationships, including romantic love and overflowing sustainable prosperity plus. That's what we seek. And that has been what I have had in my consciousness since I was little. Like what's happiness, what's health, what's harmony, and what's prosperity. And what I've come to know when I first moved into this apartment three years ago, almost three years ago, it was full on lockdown. I took possession of this apartment outside of Philadelphia on March 16th, 2020. And the reason why I moved into this apartment, I was going through a divorce and congratulations to the five people on the planet that have an amicable divorce. Um, <laughs> as my dear papa said, there's no such thing as that. And maybe Gwyneth Paltrow did it with the conscious uncoupling. That was uh, certainly the intention. It was, I don't know how to do it. Even the word divorce, dividing the force. Yeah. It's like the atom bomb. You've come together. Now you're dividing it. You know, there's just going to be some messy shit. Yeah. All the things come up. But I moved into this apartment because I wanted to be around people. I didn't like living in the old house. It was to me when I made the decision to move out. It was like a beautiful mausoleum. It was a testament to beautiful things that are now all complete. And then um, COVID happened. Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. I was actually on a cruise. <laughs> And Abraham Hicks, which is a spiritual, you know, you can do it kind of amazing lineage that I'm a participant in. I was on an Abraham Hicks cruise from March 5th to March 15th. And in that time on that boat, so much happened and the world changed. And those last couple of days, the, the boat came in and out of Fort Lauderdale and it was a Caribbean cruise where we got to, Helen, if you remember, I we know. were going to Aruba. Like, first of all, I've been told my whole life that you don't get seasick on a cruise. Well, mm. I also got seasick on a cruise. I went to the Galapagos years ago and I you're thought- You're in the ocean. You get, you're in the sea. Oh, <laughs> they're going to get sick. I know, it's a lie. Well, <laughs> and then of course there were high seas and we were going from Fort Lauderdale to Aruba to start this trip. And we went too far, almost to Aruba twice and came back to Fort Lauderdale. I remember this. Because, I mean, I realized that we were not arriving in Aruba when I figured out that the sun on the stateroom should not be on that side if we were going to Aruba and we had turned sometime in the night because the first time that we had to turn around after almost getting to Aruba, which is a long way, by the way, like a day, um, because someone had decided to skedaddle to the other side by jumping mm -hmm. off the boat and they had to retrieve the body and bring it back for inquiry. The second time that we turned around, I don't know if you've seen, did you see the old movie, The Out of Towners with Jack Lemmon and Sandra something. It's old. It's hilarious. But at the very end of it, I mean, the, all these things happen in New York. He's going to take this job in New York and he and his friend in New York beats the hell out of him. And he's always taking people's names. You know, I'm going to mm -hmm. get you. And at the very end, they're finally going home. They're not going to move to New York. They're going to stay in Ohio and they're hijacked. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, George. Well, that's the way it was. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's how I felt. I'm like, I felt the boat turn around because we're in high seas too. And at this point I'm taking anti-nausea medications right. um, to try and not like vomit. And I'm mad at everyone that told me that it feels like even on a cruise ship. Nope. And that was because they had thought that someone had COVID because that was new then. And when we got back to Fort Lauderdale, the person did not have COVID and we were in some harbor and I wanted to get off the boat. I did not want to do this anymore. I went for like yeah, spiritual teaching not... and in the Caribbean. That's how I got on a cruise spiritual teaching, going through a divorce and um, the Caribbean, I will do it. So I was not getting the Caribbean. <laughs> I was not getting, I well, of course was getting spiritual because right, sure, I was, sure, always and you're you. Yeah. But it was then that. So I tried to get off the boat and they wouldn't let me off the boat. I'm like, this is false Hostage. imprisonment That's yeah. like, <laughs> from the lawyer days. It's like, we, we're not at dock. And I'm like, I'm not doing this. Get me off. They said, well, you can get off at the next port, which was like a day later. Uh, turns out we couldn't arrive in Aruba. We went to Curacao, cute little place. And I could have tried to fly home from there for the tune of like $7,000. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the, the scuttlebutt that I hear is that because I've gone on this cruise, I've endangered myself and the world and I'm a terrible person and I've abandoned my offspring and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, that was, that was again, we're doing what we're doing. No judgment. I had my own judgments at the time. How am I, am I talking about this right now? Well, Do you because know what? that's what we're thinking of in this very moment. And oh, that's what this is. Leaving this but apartment. Leaving the apartment. Transition. <laughs> yeah, so there's there's feelings. You know, yeah. there, 
Carolyn May says, don't live in an emotional, you know, psychic, psychic graveyard. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Dispenza, his work is just so amazing. You can't create a new future from the emotions of the past. My brother, Michael says, stop pulling those feelings out of the closet and move forward. Also as you know, a guru of, of happiness and light. And, but I also know that it's easier to do that when you have someone you love who's here with you. So starting that process of cry a lot. We cry a lot as humans, maybe especially the two of us. Mm -hmm. We, we, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Of course. Helen, I met oh, you yes. how many years ago? Uh, lifetimes. So my first meeting of you was by a phone conversation. Do you mm -hmm. remember that phone conversation? Yes, I remember having a panic attack in a parking garage um, at my place of work. And I just was at a point in my life where I had no idea what to do. I was scared and I was lonely and I was very sad. Probably the saddest I've ever been was in that moment. Mm. And I had heard of you and I had heard that you were teaching people how to maybe not feel that way anymore. And I had no idea what it was that you were doing or how you were doing it or what you believed or how I would pay to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew that there was nowhere lower that I could go in that yeah. moment. You know, that at, was the first phone call. I remember I was in <laughs> the house that I used to live in, in my, the healing space that I had created for that. And of course my ex-husband had done as well. And I remember talking to you and all I can see even in this moment is light. It was like a periwinkle room, like in, in the thumbnail box of this, all that it was light. And I felt your anguish. And I also felt like, I think it's similar to where I'm right now. It's like, you know, where you're not going to be anymore. Not that, you know, whatever with the place, but you don't know where you're exactly going. Yeah. And, um, and then reaching out for help and me reaching out to you in this to to do that that's just a beautiful thing helen is one of the most powerful women on the planet she is beautiful loving her husband is crazy amazing <laughs> their son i call him the emperor i mean he is a force to be reckoned yep. with and this is what happened so when helen came here today this morning <laughs> she brought me a gift from the emperor, the emperor. Fox. <laughs> And I want to tell you, I think it's one of the most profound gifts I've ever received. It, I just cried of just being so touched at the love and power of this amazing, unstoppable energizer bunny <laughs> yeah. of a human being. He, he is all those things. A seven-year-old emperor. Oh, seven. That's right. It was December. Yeah, seven. I, was, I made him six. I mean, you didn't say it. I didn't? I don't think so. In my head. <laughs> um, I was saying six. I was just telling the people. Thank you, people. Thank you, people, for that. Helen sent me a video of him last night, mm -hmm. and it was their her husband, Fox's dad, making a beat with his mouth, and Fox dancing to it, mm -hmm. and insisting that <laughs> Chris continue to make this beat as he danced and danced. And I said, I want that. I want some man to make a beat for me as I dance and enjoy myself and without end. And, uh, <laughs> it's so true. It's incredible. He, he's got the moves. He does. He's committed to the performance, which it's I like, value. Like, shut up and dance with me. Shut up and dance with me. That's exactly what it was. So he made something for me, and this is what it is. We took it out of the frame because it might be glary. And I don't know if this is going to go backwards or not, but this is the Great Giza yes. to Cindy from Fox. And that's the Great Pyramid of Giza with the heart and the colors because Fox knew I was there. Like I flew there on his birthday. Did I? It was really birthday? close. Yeah. In December. And that this means so much to me on so many levels. First <laughs> of all, the spirit of this child is so great. And you know, let's take life a little less seriously. Let's call it the Gizdi period. It's, it's, Gizdi. it's yeah. like Gizmo or Oh yeah. Or her, was that was Gizmo from Fred Flintstone? Uh, Gizmo? Gizmo was a gremlin. Do you remember the gremlins? You couldn't feed them after midnight when okay. they became you. Mm. Oh, bad. Yeah. Well, oh, and what I'm thinking of here's Fred Flintstone, it's Gazoo. Like when Fred Flintstone got metaphysical, he would call on this the great Gazoo and had magic powers. Yeah. So it's like Gazoo and Gizmo. Yeah. And it really is. Let me tell you the Pyramid of Gizmo. Gizmo. 
<laughs> is one of the most extraordinary places I've ever been in my life. And what I've been telling people is that I believe that when I was in that Great Pyramid and climbed into it and crouched, we were there at sunrise and not a lot of people get to go in. There's like a hundred people a day and you have to go up and down with other people going through this. I met mm -hmm. people in the airport in yeah. Cairo that were telling me that, but we were able to go because of the amazing tour guide and people that we were with at sunrise with just our group of 13 women. And I mean, there's Egyptian guards and rifles and all sorts of things outside the great pyramid. And what happens is we were climbing on a, like a 45 degree angle or like 80 degree angle. And at a certain point, first we came to one chamber and then we were going up to the King's chamber, the Queen's chamber, and then the King's chamber. One really cool thing, Helen, is that I don't know if I told you this, they had all of this equipment because somewhere lower in the, in the pyramid, they had just discovered that there was a space the size of an airplane hanger what? that they didn't know That's before amazing. and they That's didn't know amazing. what was in it. And they were just beginning to, the yeah. technology to figure out that what was so in there. Cool. That's so cool. That's incredible to think about something that can, there's, I mean, this sounds cliche, but there's so much we don't know. So much we People don't know. People explore that space for centuries, and yet there's this huge cavern. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. That's and just, so cool. just discover, they're just doing it. And uh, we, this was the last day that we went to the Giza plateau into that pyramid at sunrise. I think it was December 14th. Um, 2022 was the date of that. And it's hot in there because not a lot of air circulation. Mm -hmm. And as we got closer up, we the, the King's Chamber is two thirds up. So in Fox's fantastic rendition, we were coming to like right here. And he knew this. He said, oh, it was built in stages. I, was, I said, why are there stairs? And he said, they're not stairs. It's built in stages. I was like, oh, yes. Okay. I, I say that Fox will be taking over this <laughs> business or whatever this service empire is of mine. Um, yes, yeah, someday. And I didn't even realize till just now, I mean, that the center of the heart really is where we climb to. That's so cool. So, but before you get to that, you get on all fours and you go through your, this stone space and you have to either be on all fours or fully crouched on the 45 degree angle, getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And heat is my kryptonite, not so much small spaces. Same. Don't love the small spaces, but I'm like, what am I doing? And what I know to be true in that moment is that I had compassion for every soul incarnating in a mother's womb. Like when we take our immense yeah. spirit, our soul, and we say like, yes, coach, send me in. That's how I like to do it. I'm touching mine. I'm like, whoo, yes. And we, journey. And you squish yourself in and then you got to come out. Even I mean, even if it's C-section or whatever it is, it's something. And in that moment, I had compassion for every human being that has ever come here. What, whether you think you agree to it or not, it's something. Mm -hmm. And then I reaffirmed that choice to be here because I could have not gone. I could have turned mm -hmm. around. I mean, yeah. people made that choice. Nothing wrong with that. Oh my God, Jesus. No, no, no brownie points for, for going through panic. <laughs> right. um, but I, I say that I came out of the realm of free will. Like there was, for me, there was no choice. That buzzers for people when I say I came out of the realm of free will. But I like to say in that moment, I knew my nature, like the sun shines because it's its nature to do so. I don't think the sun is reaffirming every second I'm going to shine. I think the sun just does it. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I was going there in service. I don't put myself in those situations. It was hard. I wondered if my body could do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's. I'm also thinking, what did it sound like? Oh, well, I'm going to tell you two things it sounded like. <laughs> in my head was this, you might die. Yeah, that's what I'm, I guess that's my question. What does that the transition to that sound like? Well, it was huge whooshing in my ears from what I thought like was maybe a stroke or high blood pressure yeah, yeah, event, a yeah. high blood pressure stroke event. Yeah. I wondered whether my heart could sustain. I couldn't see the end result of where I was going. And at this point, I think that's like when a baby's halfway out, like whoosh, you only yeah. got, you can't back it up now. No. You got to go forward and you don't know if you could do it. But I was in a string of people. So there was great energetic support for it. But with that whooshing, I don't think death is the last act of a cruel or absent God. And I think when you die, Mazel Tov. I heard this really cool thing from Keanu Reeves today. Like this is old. Did you did you hear that thing? Someone asked him what Stephen Colbert was asking him, what happens when you die? And he said, he breathed a moment. He said, people who love me will miss me. Aww. 
That's really sweet. That's exactly it. Wasn't that's like the 10 greatest moments of making love Keanu Reeves yeah. that popped on my feet. Also, side note, Keanu Reeves on TikTok is a joy. We'll check that out later. I just saw again. <laughs> I haven't been sleeping. This is what you do when you're not sleeping. You know, at a certain point, like 3 a.m., I called it a day. I mean, I did what I need to do, and I'm just going to watch the inspirational yeah. things. He did a TikTok for introverts that have to make a phone call. Oh, yes. Have mm -hmm. you seen that? Yes, it's like, I have. And then it's yes. busy, and he's like, yes. <laughs> so I'm in the, in the tunnel. I'm in the birthing canal of the Great Pyramid, and I realize that this is mirroring birth and you know, the transition from the spirit realm into the human realm. I'm making reaffirming the decision to be here, but to be here to serve humanity because I'm human. So it serves me, but that's what motivates me to go through time and space. Like I do some hard stuff that isn't so pleasing to the body. And I'm about to take a <laughs> sabbatical. Part of the leaving this apartment is it's time for me to, um, to regroup like the baby's been birthed and now I just need to like be with me as the baby for a while. And um, so I want to go back to that. Cause it's like, when we got to the top, there's something called a cartouche. I called it a sarcophagus, but you know, that's what it meant to me. It's like, I, I think the dead body was in it. And I can tell you, I can't remember from my mind what it really signified, but we did sacred ceremony but I, I don't know how to say the words other than the ascension process. And I was, we got into it. If you, we wanted to, we did some sounding. Um, we did things together as a group on behalf of existence and creation. And there were a number of things that I knew that awakened in that moment. I was the last person of the group, not the facilitators to get in and experience it. And we'd done some sounding beforehand, but it was silent for each person getting in. And one of the facilitators who is one of the most amazing human beings on the planet. Her name is Lisa Mullings. You might want to look her up. The Te Temple of Alchemy and Illumination is her website. And a dear friend of mine and a soul sister and a founding member of the Galactic Council of Women, All Genders Welcome. And just like, oh, on <laughs> Helen's, you can buy. Uh, here's one on YouTube. sale now. <laughs> and this says, ignite, prosper, and joy. Because if it's not fun, do we really want to do it? If there's not like, you know, there's not chocolate and orgasms at the end of that rainbow, <laughs> as I say. We don't want it. <laughs> we don't want it. That's what I also said that I realized that in the agreement to come here, I'm like, okay, I'll come and do this job in this lifetime, but I'm going to get some chocolate and orgasms too. I'm like all over the place when I talk, but I think that, <laughs> that when we as humans understand three things, the nature of death, the nature of money, and the nature of orgasms, we can then really enjoy this business of living. So I was understanding death <laughs> and life going through that. And when I climbed into the cartouche, I had done a few things beforehand. And I'm going to share this with you. I had taken off, I had had jewelry that I was bringing to all the sacred sites, to the Sphinx, to the temples on the Nile, um, and infusing with the energy of that. Because what most struck me about having this experience in this lifetime was how that ancient culture, and who knows how ancient it is, the science and the lack of science around it is tremendously inspiring. Um, is that, I just lost my train of thought because I wanted to remember that you're sitting next to me. I and am sometimes I am riveted. When I'm talking, I, feel, I miss who's with me. I feel very connected. Okay, and I'm thinking about everything you're saying and how some people get to experience what the death transition feels like mm -hmm. while being fully alive, yeah. but not the majority of people. And that's what I feel like you're sharing with us. And it's so interesting. It's fascinating. And I'm willing to do that. Like I will, I have traveled the world and still continue to, this is my like little shtick phrase. I have received and continue to receive the most ancient and esoteric teachings and practices combined with the most leading edge, cutting edge practices and wisdom so that I can be a conduit for it even in a forum that there's no squiggle exchange, although I love squiggles because number two money, we, we don't understand it. We suffer like we're doing on the planet. And um, so I had this jewelry that I had with me to infuse. That's where we went. Yes, we yes, yes. This story. We need, the people need to know. I took all of the jewelry off. It was 10,000 degrees in there and I was sweating and it was pouring down my spine. And I thought that it was doing some sort of purification of that oh. energy and it was dropping in. And I, um, I reached in 
And I took some of that sweat and I put it like intentionally that my DNA would stay there. In cool. Celtic shamanism, there's lots of different practices. But one of the things I learned was that you, if you want to have a, anchor yourself to places in the planet that you've gone, you could put a bury a stone or do mm. something like that. And for me, if I pee on the side of the road, I'm doing a water offering. Oh, yeah, That's whatever absolutely. it is. That was like <laughs> connecting myself to that space. And there was a certain point when there were tears streaming down my face, I took the tears too. So it was like the tears and the sweat I had no blood that I knew of blood, sweat and tears. And I was wearing, I knew I wanted to be in all white for this, but I had jeans on. I took my pants off because I don't want to give birth with pants on. I don't want to die with pants on. That's a note to anyone who's with me. I agree. If I have to yeah. drop my body, like take my no pants, pants off and, um, and you don't have sex with your pants on either. Although I have heard stories of cutting holes and things. So, well, you know, whatever. It's still different. Yeah. And um, I had a pink silk scarf, which I laid in the cartouche when it was my turn to get in. And I laid there and I immediately started vibrating. There was a YouTube recently, uh, Russell Brand interviewing Graham somebody. God, I wish I knew his last name right now. He is this, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Journalist. He's not an archaeologist. And he's been, he did a series on Netflix, like a seven mm -hmm. series about the archaeological sites and talking about the possibility that there was a past enlightened civilization yeah. that did that. I know that to be true from being there now. Um, and I said, he does not granted access. He's like persona non gratis in mm -hmm. Egypt. And I wrote on there to, to him, Graham and Russell, you know, my dear friends in the <laughs> energy field and um, whatever you think of them. I have recently been there. If I'd be happy to talk about it, which has, I haven't told you this. It has elicited a string of comments. Like, I love tell this. us, tell us, yeah, tell us. The people want to know. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I want to just write it on a YouTube comment, but here it is. I can now refer well, them this to is this. Our space. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so my body started to physically vibrate. And I say there's places on this planet that I have been to where I don't have to meditate myself into an enlightened state. I don't have to pray. I don't have to do anything with anyone else. It just is that. Of course, I was with other people and doing it. And I started to vibrate. And Lisan leaned over the cartouche. Things you don't have to say very often in your life. Lisan leaned over, over the, the cartouche. cartouche. <laughs> and in her wisdom said, if there is a sound, Cindy, make it. And I said, oh, there is a sound. And it is big and and loud and and she said go ahead i said it's going to be a whale she, she, you know go ahead and what came through me was i i feel like the best way i can describe it with words is the anguish the existential anguish of women and mm -hmm. humanity of feeling separate from love whether it's the lover and the beloved in human form or the greater and it was intense. And then there were, you know, the, the sobs. And then that quieted. And I, I put myself, I was on my back. I put myself in childbirth position. Mm -hmm. And no pants. Underwear, though. I mean, <laughs> sacred Sanitary. panties. Sacred, sacred panties. Sanitation. Sacred sanitation. <laughs> and um, I felt like my body was materializing and rematerializing. And I will let you know this. I got no issues with medicinal mushrooms and ayahuasca and peyote and all that. Cindy Lou can't do it. I smoked pot, weed, marijuana, cannabis, whatever the great word for it is now, once in college. I lost three days of my life. Um, and I realized that drugs were not for me. <laughs> How long were you in the cartouche? Cartouche? Cartouche. I think it's C-A-R-T-O-U something. Cartouche. In the, <laughs> in the uh, cosmic cartouche. sushi. I think it was probably like the whole adventure took like an hour yeah, and a half wild. or something to get up yeah, and get back. Yeah. Um, it was shaky getting down too, sometimes with the knees. Um, so I'm in the cartouche and I'm feeling this, like my body is just reforming in some level, like light particle waves, like Star Trek beam yeah. me up, Scotty. Stone cold sober. And I then felt like what was coming through me was the birthing of the new humanity. Mm. And I also did something which I'm gonna say, I have in my head said three times, am I gonna share this right now? But the only reason I don't share it is because of the shame that has been put on women in the past. I took my right hand middle finger and I, I tapped my clitoris three times. 
knock three times on the clitoris <laughs> if you like, want hello. joy. It's just a hello. An honoring, though, really, of yes. a sacred space. But I tell you, as, as, as much as I know to be true, I still think, like, what's going to happen to me if people mm -hmm. hear that? Like well, that, right. like, you know, yeah. am I going to have it cut out? You know, right. like yeah. that's in the energy still on the planet. Am I going to be shunned? Well, and especially because of where you were, the history of where you yeah. were. Yeah. And who we are mm -hmm. today, here in this moment yeah. and yeah. where we are. Thank you. In this very moment. In this very moment. In this very in moment. This very moment. What I've had to move through is a twisting in my solar plexus and a, a, a think like it's not safe to share. That's what happened. And I am in dignity sharing it because it was what I was guided to do. And I've spent a lot of the last few years of my life being an advocate, a true mm -hmm. advocate for what I know to be true. To advocate for the light rather than fight the dark or fight the opposition, to advocate for the oneness. And I say that the fierce feminine, you know, if you know me, you know, there's probably know there's a fierce feminine prosperity power activation ignition experience that has been coming through me for humanity and specifically women or anyone who respects and reveres the feminine principle, the female body and the energy of mother, like the fierce feminine energy, she advocates for the oneness without compromise. She doesn't destroy the other. If the other doesn't like it, that's okay. It's not fun to be hated, maybe for some no. people or shunned or judged or reviled or talked about but it's worth it to have the integrity of my own soul knowing. Anyhow, tap, tap, tap. And then climbed out of the cartouche and we did some ceremony to end quickly after that because our time was coming up and we had to be done by 7 a.m. We got there at 5. We had to be done by 7. 5 a.m. In a cartouche. Got up at 3. No pants. <laughs> no pants. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me, remember when we did the the qigong where there was a part where you go no breath yes. no pants yes. in a qigong movement <laughs> also like a murder mystery dinner 5 a.m no pants in a oh cartoon. miss scarlet in the conservatory oh, yeah. Yeah. That fight. cindy with no pants in the cartouche yeah. what i so appreciated i don't really like museums or tours of ancient things i've been i've done it all over the world peru india turkey blah blah, blah. because this is i don't always say i don't think this is the most enlightened view but this is what i think of most of those places comes down to two statements. Dead people did great things. Dead people did awful things. Okay. And so my purpose, what are the live people doing now? Like I would, that's like, I just can't even, I don't care. So with all due respect, I don't care so much. I care really about the, the knowing that we have no idea the technology that made much, much of what I felt, even when we, we were at the one place in outside of Cairo, where you go deep into caverns to see where they mm. had the sarcophaguses, sarcophagi of, of the sacred bulls, like 70 of them, these huge granite things. They don't know how they smooth it. There's no human it's like wild. technology. Yes. And um, so two things that very impressed me was that there really is so much that's available for us to remember and know that's possible. Like whatever I think about the climate or what right. might happen, if there's technology to do that, if we're on board and we understand the nature of money, which we don't yet as a species, but a whole huge one of us led by mm. me and others are bringing the truth that money is emphatically not a limited thing. It's what people agree as power. We've agreed it's limited and we compete and we fight and we kill and we torture our minds and ourselves and others over it. And that is, Whenever I look at the economy, which I do because I'm super smart, gifted with that, and I can understand to a certain degree what's going on, the healing of it, I know from the depth of my soul, is not going to come from that level. It's going to come from the level, the infinite supply of the universe that has the wisdom to even do that, that we can be awakened to. Yes. So that was the first thing. The second thing that I knew to be true about what was going on there is that that culture, that ancient culture spent almost all of their energy in the connection between the spirit and matter. Hmm. And I, that impresses me. Yeah. And I think about my life, like the connection between spirit and matter. I don't think there's real happiness without it. Yeah. There might be okayness or, right. you know, you can, it's a fine choice and all of that. But for me, without that connection, mm -hmm. that's what I've devoted my life to. And then the third thing that I knew to be true, which wasn't about the Egyptians, it was about my soul is that I had, as well as the other people there, contracted before we came here 
in this moment in time to go to that space at that moment after what we experienced for those two weeks, we were reactivating those sacred sites. I believe that they are like a portal, like the chakra system between the heavens and the earth and that mother earth and her inhabitants, including us need a huge shot of remembrance yes. of what our true infinite power is and how to imagine a new age rather than the most nefarious, you know, dystopian age, which happened. Yeah. <laughs> and that we had agreed to do that. And me personally, that I had that process was helping me fulfill the contracts that I came here to fulfill. When I came as me, because I was rebirthing myself, yeah. I was remembering with vibration and impression, my choice to come here. And I agreed to do five things. What I remember, birth those four people, egg, womb space, birth, boobs, school there was some other night time in the <laughs> you know crew hospitals there's soccer games uh, you know 24 7 yep. they're all on their own for whatever opinions they have of me or not and i did that check and i was to live my life up to the point that i could um be a conduit for the fierce feminine prosperity power program and then culminating and being in the Gizda, <laughs> Gizda Plateau. The heart of Gizda. The heart of it. The heart of, the heart of, a really? heart between, like the divine heart and human yes. are meeting and be able to serve that function in the way that the ability to feel feelings like I did yes. would be able to do. And I feel in a sense completed this in this lifetime and that I will continue to go on. But those, that, that propelling energy that didn't came with some angst, I feel a settling of. And so that's also part of the reason to be completing with this apartment and completing other things in certain ways. And the fierce feminine is, um, it's ensuing and it's almost fully birthed. It'll be fully birthed for the people that are receiving it on March or February 21st, 2023. And it becomes this, it is, it is, and is becoming this radiant, gift to humanity to help us get through and to be able to reorganize our relationship to money and power and the feminine current, the feminine soul of money through the, the process of what has been coming to bring in a new age. And that is a fact, Jack. That's a good life. It's a life, a life well lived. lived. A life <laughs> worth living. Still living <laughs> in process. One of the, one of the very high vibrational, beautiful souls that's part of the the fierce feminine prosperity power. I say program, but I don't know what the word is for that. Her name is Catherine. It's her first name. Hi, sweetie pie. <laughs> she years ago, I remember when she was creating a program for herself in relationship mm -hmm. to me being to the, the grateful conduit of it for her. And she made it for herself. And once she created this program for herself, she said that to me, this was like three years ago. Yeah. She said, that's a life worth living. And I think of her so often, like, what's a life worth living? And it is worth living that. And what I need now need to do for myself is that just like childbirth and pregnancy for me and, and all of the things, my body needs some care right now. And it's a big thing to be a newborn mother and having gone through that and to be re-experiencing ourselves, which I think so many of us are. I mean, I share this because I don't think I'm odd woman out. I think so many of us are redefining what it means to be a woman or any gender identity or none. And how do we move forward in this climate? And I have the ability to do this and the chutzpah to do it and, and uh, the means to do it. And it's time. So I've been describing... You know, we said earlier, so tonight they have a, a Facebook community. I'll say an energetic community that Facebook gets to be the conduit for because it's healing Facebook too. And it's called women, asterisk, as you know, if you're part of it, and the asterisk means, or anyone, regardless of gender identity or none, who respects and reveres, I've said it before, but I'm going to say it lots of times, the feminine principle, the female body, and the energy of mother. I'm going to add in the energy of lover too. I think that needs to come in the yeah. energy of mother and lover. Yeah. 
in the romantic relationships. Women attracting and mastering gobs of money and oodles of power uplifting the world. Because gobs and oodles is fun. I mean, it's just, it's got to be fun. We need to have fun. If it ain't, as Jen, <laughs> my beautiful friend and soul sister and colleague in this venture, says, if it ain't fun, you know, if you want it done, make it fun. Truth. And um, gobs and oodles of fun. Gobs and oodles. We're coming together to remember the power of the feminine principle to grow new life and to nurture it. And that's what's missing missing in the global economy is the ability to nurture our children, which is the adults too, a child of somebody, yes. and to be able to collaborate and play. And so that's what I was saying to you when you came. Like, I don't want to be with like-minded people. We're not like-minded on a lot of things, but we are like-spirited, meaning that the love and the soul and the and the joy of having differences of opinions does not take us out of relationship. It enhances it. Yes. Here, here. I said, if I was sitting at a table of Helen's, of me's, <laughs> I would be so bored. I would be more than bored. I would get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it is a joy to be with people who you can be yourself with, even if you are different in some ways, and be fully you and have them be fully them. And no reservation, yeah. just love. And find a way to collaborate, not yes. compete, not even cooperate, which I think is like toddler parallel play, which is fabulous. <laughs> I call it the evolution of the three C's. We compete, we cooperate, and then we get to collaborate. Yeah. And when we collaborate, that's from the level of the soul or the spirit. And that's how, as we grow in numbers, I believe we've already reached the tipping point energetically. I feel yeah. it. I feel it, but it's not quite here yet. And what we get to do as individuals and as parts of group is to say yes to the fact that the we have within us the same exact creative power that made the heavens and the earth. The way we direct it is our imagination and the way it's thwarted by is by feeling separate mm -hmm. from other like spirited people. And it um, it's a painful thing when that happens. So this is the time and the age to be rejoin or joining and rejoining with like spirited people. I, I've been at, been and am being in, interviewed for lots of podcasts and only one's come out so far because it's been a slur, slurry of them, a flurry slurry. A slurry. But I find that I'm meeting these like spirited people yeah. like Junie Moon in her yep. Midlife Out Loud podcast. Very cool. And it um, was so good. Listen to it. And Gloria Grace <laughs> Rand. I mean, uh, love, engage, oh, live, love, engage, I think is her podcast. And she's part of Gobs and Ubles. So is Junie by way where, where those links are coming together. Yeah. And I so appreciate women, I'll say of my age of late fifties that have taken the steps out of the traditional dynamic. And I'll say up for the white race too, yeah. and white women of privilege that have stepped out of that paradigm and have taken a stand, even though we might have seemed to have lost everything in the process that traditionally like what i was growing towards was the family mm -hmm. the kids the growing old with a spouse and grandchildren and sunday dinners with the kids and you know that's not my current life right and, and on any level right and um yeah and then to step out those of us that have this you know in us to step out and speak and share um and just be together yeah. Because you can be with other people in any form. We are so lucky we get it this way and this way with you. But mm -hmm. just being with each other. And then the hope. I say all the time, like, why am I doing this? Is so the children don't starve and the children's children, children. And to feel a sense of confidence and faith and security in our ability to create. And then there's, you know, seven-year-old Fox that is knows about the Gizde, Gizmo, Giza Plateau and the different levels and the colors and the red and the green and the gray and the black. And um, I, re I remember when you and Chris had found out you were pregnant and I was with both of you and you said you were so grateful that this child could choose to be whoever they wanted to be, gender, sexual orientation, yeah. anything. And I just thought, what? I mean, I, <laughs> I was seven, eight years ago, I was still a little like, you want that? Like, yeah. it's like, not from the perspective, it'll be a yeah. harder life for the child, which is what I, yeah. that was like what I was, what I learned into mm -hmm. was that if you were a different gender identity or sexual per persuasion other than heterosexual and, and cisgender, 
that your life was going to be harder, which by the way, might have been and still is true. Yeah. But that also could be a reason to bootstrap you not me not being able to accept more. And I'm still in the process of that. The, the youngest um, soul that I hosted thoroughly and birthed out and nurtured up my breasts and did the round the clock thing and now on their own identifies as they and um, queer. And so that is. All we can do is be open to what they become. And that, I think there were ways in which I was so ready. And then there are ways that I am still surprised every second that my son exists of what he can do that I didn't expect. And it's all the things it's beautiful and hard and scary and cool. And who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> and that like, really, that's where I am right now. Recently on the gods and noodles group, we posted a quote, like leap and the nets will appear. There's a song from Jason Mraz called make it mine. Jason Mraz, by the way, love is a four letter word. What a great album. So much great vibrational stuff in there. Everything is sound is another one of his songs. That's amazing. But it's Leap in the Net Will Appear, which, I mean, he didn't make that up, but right, right, Leap in the right. Nets Will Appear. That's what I feel right now that I'm doing is that I've leapt into this new life. I got birthed in the Gizde Plateau at the <laughs> Great Pyramid of Giza, Gizde Gizmo. And it's time to let go of my past environment and construct, which I've been doing for years. And I don't quite know. I mean, I'm blessed to have places I can call home, but I, I know there is a full-time home for me. And it might not be or here for a year or two or three. Yeah. And, but I have this great faith. I, I, I started something in Helen, the Galactic Council of Women, All Genders Welcome. She is the Galactic yeah. Midwife. That was a few years ago. So that's what I'm going to bring this to conclusion soon. <laughs> but once I got here, once the movers canceled and I had to get um, renegade uh, movers that you got me that were from some Eastern Bloc country. Yeah. And because everyone else was not moving because of COVID, that they moved some of the stuff, moved out of that house in a very unpleasant, emotional, you know, turmoil situation and got here with all the boxes and the stuff. I had one dear friend who just said, you know, to hell with the fear of COVID, you need someone, her name is Pam, with you at that house when you leave. And she came and she made me eggs. Even though she's vegan, she made me like, <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and and was with me in this process. And then I was here for months in the lockdown, wanting to be with a lot of people. And it was like, what? I didn't even see my neighbors until five months later when there was a fire alarm at 1230 in the rain. We all had to go outside because you, you'd either lose your you. eardrum. Right. And I'm like, oh, hi, people. Um, what I kept saying is what the life that I've led and the gifts that I've been given and the blessing to want to cultivate them of like, energy healing extraordinaire. Like mm -hmm. I just understand about that. How can I serve? And what came to me over and over again was that this business of thinking there's not enough is what causes all the heinous acts. This, this accumulation of rampant wealth, the wars, the, the hatred between, you know, people that love each other. So there's not enough for me to feel good. I have to compete or shun, yeah. dominate or shun, destroy or manipulate to be able to do it. And I, I like to say this thing, cancer doesn't know it's suicidal. It sends out all these shoots to get what it wants. Eventually it kills itself because it kills the host. I think that though that is an analogy for what happens in the planet when we think there's not enough and we have to yeah, accumulate. It's true. And this is what I say. I don't think, you, now I know you might have a different opinion. I got no issues with billionaires. I just think that <laughs> it's billion power agreements. Like, and then you can have the football industry and the children can eat and be educated and the teachers can be well taken care I of. I think that point we both agree on. Yeah. <laughs> as long as there's enough, which there is, yeah. we just need to change the mindset for people to truly believe that. Yeah. Like, it's not about no one having more. It's about everyone having enough. Yeah. And that brings me back to the, so the Galactic Council of Women All Genders Welcome was what I said. I am just going to take a stand out there and be crazy connected to the oneness it's galactic we're part of something greater it's a council because it feels benevolent of women because the feminine force of nurturing and of having enough of of what you know women have triplets they their supply of their breast milk increases to meet the demand of the triplets i've seen that in I mean, kudos yes. to those yes women. um there's just enough for everyone and all genders welcome because of course it's not a delineate if there's not oneness there's not oneness right 
So we started that and you were instrumental in doing the technology for getting that started. And that has then birthed the, the Prosper Plus Empire and the Fierce Feminine and the Gobs and Oodles and, and all the things. And what I've been saying for the past year to myself before I reached the Great Pyramid was like, it's possible that all I'm doing is putting some bricks down in this, this new, this new um, true paradigm of the infinite supply of the universe can be manifested here on Earth. And that the mother earth has plenty for her inhabitants if we if we know how to treat her and mm -hmm. and there is kind of an annihilation of the mother energy and the, the feminine principle in some way or the attempted that i might just be making some layers in a pyramid but it's worth it it's a life worth living and i actually can see it happening it just might not be here today so in this very moment i'm not sleeping with the energy of my personal psyche in a new leap longing for humanity and wanting to serve and also know I can represent that by mm -hmm. taking care of myself. I've, I've completed or about to complete this why I've come here task, but the most foundational why we come here is to learn how to love and enjoy love and share it. And I believe that's been my mission, whether it's been taken that way or not. Mm -hmm. And now to create the time and space for me to experience that as my my purpose for continuing to live my my new life so that's what's happening in this very what's moment. happening tonight though oh god thank you for that so tonight on the gobs and noodles group <laughs> as i said i think the number one obstacle to the feminine current which anyone of gender identity masculine or none or you know or, or multiple has is the feminine principle of nurturing and growing new life, like what a body can do and what uh, that can do in that service current of the fe the mother and, and its wholeness is that the number one obstacle to that being what brings in a new world is feeling separate from one another. So tonight we're going to be having a live, um, it's, it's what I am saying, it's like it's a prosperity plus activation and share your true voice. So it's going to be a sharing. It's interacting with me live. I'm going to be doing using some of these ancient and cutting edge leading technologies and modalities to help us like I do. And then I want to hear the voice of the people showing up. And that's what I've just did on one of the Galactic yes. Council events yesterday. Yes. It's like, what are you personally going through? What do you know to be true? Why are you here? How are you handling this? What do you need more of? And those kind of conversations to increase, especially the people that have joined this, I like to say there's like, I don't know the number. It's like 400 and some people that seem to identify as women by their name. I don't know how they all identify. And Elliot, my friend Elliot, I was practice law. I was a corporate litigation attorney. It's how I came in. And he, to my knowledge, is the only person that identifies as male that's part of this 400 group. And he just liked the something I did a couple of days ago and I just have such appreciation for him. Thanks, Elliot. I don't know if you're listening to these <laughs> things, Elliot, or you just heart them because you love me. I mean, I hadn't seen Elliot in years. As a matter of fact, when I had my first child, I was, um, oh, by the way, it's a special event for the members of the Gobs and Oodles group. So A, join the Gobs and Oodles group, or just know that, you know, yeah. you can join it at some point and have other ones that come. The link is below our bodies right here, right? Is it? Time, it looks like it. Okay, I good. think so. Or about. it will be in the comments. Yes. And, and remember, all gender identities, as long as you respect and revere the feminine principle of the female body, body, body and the energy of mother and, and lover. Yes. And so I know I could talk forever, but Elliot, I just told this story to my daughter the other day when I had her. It was I did not interface with pregnancy and childbirth in a physically easy way. Mm -hmm. And I was still practicing law at the time. And I went on leave at the end of the pre in the beginning of the pregnancy due to hyperemesis, lost 22 pounds in three weeks, almost died hospital. Oh, Ivy. And then um, I was at, um, in Pennsylvania superior court for some sort of hearing As for something, yes. you know, the July before my August due date. And I had some sort of event and had to be taken home and high blood pressure and blah, blah, and bed rest. And, and then she was, I needed, the pregnancy needed to be induced because it turns out she wasn't moving in the belly the way she was supposed to. The cord was wrapped around her neck two times and we did this induction, which is like what I call the chain, chain, Texas chain song master. And it's not the worst. You get a baby after hopefully. Yeah. 
So there was a lot that went yeah. on with that. So it was a two day process and all that. I remember a friend coming in, a couple coming in and I took them by the chest and I'm like, I'm the poster child for birth control. <laughs> Don't let this happen to you, you know, or whatever it was. And so the next day, Elliot had taken some of my cases because I was on that. And Elliot's like, hey, Cindy, how's the baby? Elliot, you might not remember this. Maybe we did talk about this, I don't know, <laughs> recently. I think we've only messaged since he's joined these groups a couple years ago. And he's like, oh, by the way, for the X and Y case, do you know with the motion for summary judgment? And I was like, <laughs> and I said, Elliot, I just spit a baby out my ass. I said, figure it out. Pretend I died. Figure it out. And I like hung up on the phone on him. Oh, I'm sorry, Elliot. And you're sorry. You're but forgiven. Also not sorry. And you're forgiven. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a link tied in the oh. So, dear Helen, how would you like to bring this in this very moment to conclusion? Uh, I hope that we see everyone tonight. That would be fabulous because then it wouldn't end and we would get to keep talking. I um, in gratitude. What do, I will ask you this question. What do you what do you think your unique flavor of what you bring to the world is? Like whatever comes mm. to you in this moment. A uh, beautiful messiness. Mm. <laughs> That's a Jason Mraz song too. A beautiful mess. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I'll have to listen to it. That's right. Beautiful. Well, thank you, dear, wonderful people. If you've stuck <laughs> around this long, I know that you, we are like spirited for sure, and that what you're experiencing personally matters. I'll say that your happiness, your health, the harmony in your relationships, including on this planet and your prosperity plus to be able to have those power agreements that people call money, especially as women or people who respect and revere women to be able to help reauthor from the level of energy, what's been happening, how we've gotten off kilter with that force that is meant to nurture our experience. Like it matters. And that there is great energy for us to be able to learn how to access and cultivate and master. And, and there's going to be an event that's coming up in February. I'll just say that it will be announced next week, but it is a forum that will help deliver this baby that has been coming through me and, and the creative force team and, and us and so many others. So dear, wonderful person in this very moment, I'm feeling hot a fresh hot flash. My face feels a little <laughs> bit like vibrating. Um, my butt hurts from sitting on the chair so long. And um, these are valid sensations <laughs> in the body. And I'm grateful for Helen grateful for absolutely for everything, wherever our paths may take us <laughs> together in this world or not. And I'm grateful for all of you. Love, prosperity, power, and blessings. I've always wanted to do that. Okay, thank you. No, you do that part. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs>